morning. We welcome you to Southport Christian Center's live stream service and trust that you will enjoy the presence of the Lord in your home as we enjoy him here. We so look forward to these times together with you and let's pray together that God will meet each of us according to our need. He said, come into his presence with singing and into his courts with thanksgiving and so we do that this morning. Let's pray. Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise for who you are. We thank you for loving us so much, for dying on the cross, for giving us the liberty we enjoy. And we pray today, Lord, that you will be present in every home, to meet every need, touch those who are sick, lift up the discouraged, those who are worried or concerned. I pray they will find peace and rest in you. And Lord, we give this time to you now and ask that you'll be present in every home. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Later in the service, we will be sharing communion together. We ask that you prepare for that with your family as well. So now, Gary, would you lead us in worship this morning? And God bless you, worship team, as you share in leading us in worship. Amen. So those of you at home, if you could stand, are able to stand and worship with us and share in worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus. You know, and don't forget how many know that we do have a God that, that can remove any obstacles in our lives, that no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what we're going through, that He is the God of miracles. He is a God that moves, amen? And He is a God that heals whatever you're going through. As you're singing to the Lord, as you're worshiping and praising wherever you are, just lift up whatever is in your life that you need removed, any obstacles, anything, lift it up to us. Because mountains are still being moved, amen? Strongholds are still being moved.
we're forgiven, and we give thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in Jesus' name, we examine our own hearts. We judge ourselves according to the authority of your word. In areas where we've missed the mark, strife, unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, hatred, covetousness, fear, worry, unbelief, in any other area. We take Jesus as our advocate and high priest. We ask forgiveness according to the word of God in 1 John 1, 9, where your word says that you're faithful and just to forgive us when we confess our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we do not eat of the bread nor drink of the cup unworthily, but we rightly discern the Lord's body. Father, we receive communion together now as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we are free from the works of Satan, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Partake of the bread, please. After the same manner also, he took the cup and he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, my blood. This do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Partake of the cup. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all you provided for us in Christ Jesus. We confess this day that we are blessed the Lord. This covenant we entered into at the new birth is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises of God. And we are particular those promises now. We are healed. We are redeemed. We are delivered from the authority of darkness. We are translated into the kingdom of God to your son. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We come behind in no good thing. And all that we set our hands to prospers, and we praise you, Father, for the newness of life we now enjoy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, David, for leading us in communion, and thank you, worship team, once again. And Gary, thank you for singing that wonderful song, the book. Revelation is what we're going to be talking about today, and thanks for singing the Revelation song. Those words were so thrilling because they came right from the book. Last Sunday, we had an introduction to this wonderful book, and today I would like to look at an overview of the book of Revelation. Lord willing, next Sunday we will be talking about the events that follow the coming of Jesus Christ to earth. So. We have some exciting times to look forward together. This morning, an overview of the book. There are many views of this amazing book and a wide spectrum of approaches to it. But the common denominator in all of these is this, the ultimate triumph of Jesus Christ who culminates history with his final coming and reigns with and through his church on earth forever and ever. Can you take all that in? That is what we have to look forward to, amen? The dispensational view is the most common and popularized view. This view affects how we view God's work throughout the whole Bible. Promises made to Israel in the Old Testament will be literally fulfilled in national Israel. This view separates God's work in national Israel from his work within the church. When Jesus came and dwelt among men, he made a kingdom offer to the Jewish people, and they rejected it. Therefore, God established the church and postponed the promises to Israel to the end of the age, where Israel will again be God's people after the rapture. Revelation is seen as allowing us to see the working out of God's plan for Israel and helping us to see the signs of his return. There are two key verses in this approach. Revelation 1.19, Jesus is speaking to John and he says, Write the things which you have seen and the things which you are, which are and the things which will take place after this. And then there's Revelation 4.1 where John writes, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking, 
saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. The things which you have seen refers to John's vision of the glorified Christ that we studied a few weeks ago in Revelation 1. The things which are refer to the letters to the seven churches. And the things that will take place after this refers to everything from Revelation chapter 4 to the end of the book. The events related in Revelation are future and largely chronological. The seal judgments begin the Great Tribulation, and the seventh seal indicates the trumpet judgments. In this view, the forces of the world government are gathered together against national Israel at the end during the Great Tribulation. It is their goal to destroy Israel. But Jesus will return with his saints and destroy the opposing forces at the Battle of Armageddon. He then will set up a 1,000 year reign during which the prophetic promises to Israel will all be fulfilled. The central message of the Revelation is found in Revelation 19.6. And I heard, says John, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and it's the sound of mighty thunderings. Think of that for a moment before we read what they were saying. Great multitudes, mighty waters, and mighty thunderings. That was loud. And they were saying this, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And that is the central message of this wonderful book. Revelation 17, 14 summarizes the book. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. You and I have chosen to follow the Lamb, and we're involved in continual spiritual struggle in our world. And in the Revelation, we see the nature and the tactics of the enemy revealed. Our enemy, the dragon, Satan, knows that he was defeated on the cross, and he desperately tries to thwart the purposes of God before his final doom. And he makes war with the saints. In Revelation 12, 17, we read, And the dragon, Satan, was enraged with the woman, the church, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The first beast that's mentioned symbolizes anti-Christian government and political power in chapter 13 of the Revelation. And the second beast symbolizes anti-Christian religion and philosophy. Together, they produce the deceptive anti-Christian secular society that we live in today. Commerce and culture, all are featured in this. The role of the beast is to deceive and discourage anyone from receiving God's redemptive plan. And we surely see that taking place in our day. Those who bear the mark of the beast are not registered in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 20:15 says, anyone not found in the Book of Life was cast into the lake of God has created the order of marriage and family. And Satan, who cannot create anything, is set to destroy and distort what God has created. Believers must, with godly wisdom, discern and walk in obedience, knowing that after victorious suffering, we will reign with Jesus. Behind the pomp and the power of the world, there is the reality of the absolute sovereignty of the Lord God who is the Lamb. And he assures us of the ultimate doom of sin and evil. God is using all the forces of evil and all the consequences of sin and even the suffering of his saints to accomplish his purposes. Believers who are suffering persecution need to know that their suffering is not in vain and that ultimately they will be rewarded. For all of us, our blessed hope is that certainty that the enemy has been defeated and is doomed, and that we are not fighting a 
losing battle. Our victor has already overcome, and therefore we will be overcomers. John received these prophecies as a series of visions containing images and numbers that were often prophesied in the Old Testament. These came to him sometimes in chronological order and otherwise. So the order and timing is sometimes unclear to us. He recorded what he saw when he saw it. Every title that is ascribed to Jesus in the New Testament is mentioned at least once in the book of Revelation, describing his present position, his continuing ministry, and his ultimate victory. Jesus has finished his redemptive work. By his blood, sinners have been forgiven and made kings and priests unto God. Satan has been defeated and Jesus is enthroned. In Revelation 19, 16, it says, he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is not a political messiah. He is a sacrificed lamb, referred to as such 28 times in the book of Revelation. The Lamb of God who is coming is the goal of all eternity's plan. In Revelation 21, 1, John wrote this, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. The description of the Holy Spirit as the seven spirits of God is symbolic of the perfection and completeness of God. Revelation 4, 5 says, and from the throne proceeded lightning, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. At the close of each message to the seven churches, you remember the words were, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Spirit only says what Jesus says, and the Spirit is the Spirit of prophecy. Every genuine prophecy is inspired by the Holy Spirit and bears witness to Jesus. Revelation 19.10 says, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The prophetic visions were communicated to John only when he was in the spirit. Revelation 1.10 says that John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The content of these visions is nothing less and the revelation of Jesus Christ, even as the title of that book implies. All genuine prophecy demands a response. Revelation 22, 17 says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts, Come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. What an invitation this is. Everyone either hears and receives it or hears and rejects, us that, rejects that appeal. As we pray, the Holy Spirit is continuously working in and through the church to invite those who are still outside to come. And it is only by the empowering of the Holy Spirit that the church, the Bride of Christ, is enabled to witness and to patiently endure until we come. And we must endure. Though there are many views regarding the timing and order of end time events, we must keep in mind that the ultimate triumph of Jesus Christ over all of the economic, political, and spiritual forces that currently strive over our world is the message of the book of Revelation. And with that in mind, let's praise the Lord for his ultimate victory. Amen? Amen. Jesus says of himself in Revelation 22, 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. In Revelation 22, 16, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have set my angel to testify to you, and these things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. In Revelation 22, 7, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly. 
Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And in Revelation 22, 14, Jesus is speaking again and says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. And then there's one final time that Jesus speaks in Revelation 22, 20, where he says, Surely, that means you can depend on it, I am coming quickly. And John adds these words, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Can we say that as well? Amen. Amen. Even Amen. so, come, Lord Jesus. This blessed hope was declared by angels at the ascension of Jesus, it was spoken of by the apostles, and here it is tenderly stated by Jesus himself at the very end of his book. It is as if he is saying, I've left you a lot to do, but never lose the sight of the blessed hope. Never let it be overshadowed as you wait for my coming. I am coming back soon, is his promise. And with John, let us say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen? As we get ready to pray this morning, I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you have received Jesus. Are you ready for his coming? Do you know him? You can. And in a moment, we will pray together. And I trust that that will be the moment where if you have not received him, you will open your heart to do that. He loves you. And I want you to hear his voice saying this morning, come. If anyone thirsts, let him come and receive of the water of life freely. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your presence here among us today. Thank you for the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ that shows us what you are like, Jesus. We can't wait to see you, and with joy we love and serve you until you come. But Lord, our hearts are concerned this morning for anyone listening who maybe has not made that decision, has heard about you, but he doesn't really know you. And I just pray that this will be the moment he will open his heart and say, Jesus, Please come into my heart and life. I want to love and serve you the rest of my life. I need you to forgive my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. And I too will look forward to your soon return to earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If that was you this morning, I know your heart is flooded with joy as you realize you have heard from Jesus and he has received you as his beloved child. Please join the worship team once again as they remind us, I'm forever grateful. Grateful that he came to me and grateful that he came to you today. God bless you today.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everyone that has received you today. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for your love and your prayers and your continual faithful support in the ministry of Southport. We're so blessed, and we know that God is blessing and rewarding you for doing that. We can hardly wait to see you until we can all be together again. And you are ever in our thoughts and in our prayers. If you have need of prayer, let us know during the week, and we will pray with you. Our prayer team will believe with you for miracles, and we are seeing prayers answered every week, and we thank God for that. Until then, please remember our schedule. Tomorrow, Monday night at 7 is prayer time. We ask that you gather your family, teach your children to pray, rejoice in the answers to prayer that your family is enjoying, and believe God for all the others that are coming. Amen? And then on Tuesday morning at 10, Bruce Bible Study ladies come and receive an outline to study during the week and receive food if they need it, and we invite you to take part in that. On Wednesday night at 7, we have a live stream. Bible study, please join us as Ruth and David lead us in worship and as we study together the book of John. It's a marvelous book. He's the one who wrote the revelation and so the two kind of go together and we're enjoying that time and invite you to join us for that. On Friday at 10 o'clock, we have food distribution here. Hundreds of families are lining up every week to receive food and we invite you to join them if you have a need of food. God has blessed us abundantly and we are so happy to share that with you. And then on Saturday at 10 o'clock, we offer a box lunch and snack for those that have that need. Again, next Sunday, we will look at the truth that follow the coming of Jesus to earth. And there are many exciting things that he has planned for us, and we will pursue those together, Lord, really. Until we meet again, be watchful, be ready for his coming and share the invitation to come with everybody that you know. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and goodbye.